BBC repair series um, basically what we've done is we've looked into this machine here which we saw in the last episode and um, finally got it running stably and um, I've also got various other bits and pieces on the machine running nicely now and the biggest problem I found was this um, ROM board that was installed in the machine and it was this This is a Watford Electronics 12 ROM system and um, it's seen better days once I took it apart and had a good look at it and that was causing the instability which is what I thought it was in the beginning but I hope to get it um, looked at shortly and we'll repair it and then put it back in the machine. But since um, doing that I've managed to get the machine to run nice and stable I've transferred the ROMs off of that board onto the machine itself. I'm not running word-wise because I don't really need to because I wasn't quite sure why it was in this machine to start off with because I found that this computer also has a early GUI um, which is interesting, it's quite nice and the, the mouse actually works on it as well so it'd be nice to have a you know a good look at it and then later on we'll transport the ROMs onto this repaired board and back into the machine the way it was. Now other than that I've managed to get the disk drive function with the machine and it runs really well and um, I haven't really done much on cleaning it up yet as you could probably see. I'm more interested in getting the mechanics or the electronics working of it and getting a stable working machine out of it. But I've also um, added to the system a monitor, a cub monitor and um, anybody who knows about these computers in the 1980s the Microvitec cub monitor was the go-to monitor for the BBC Micro and we're going to take a look at that as well. So let's have a look at how the machine fares at the moment. So those of you who've been following this will probably recognize this kind of very off color BBC micro. Um, I've taken out the the ROMs that run the teletext. They will go back in but I really wanted to get as little in the machine as possible and build it up from there to get a nice stable system. So starting off with only the bare ROMs which was originally just basic, the basic ROM to get the machine powered up and booting. Then I added in the one of the Watford Electronics ROMs, which seems, when I booted it up, which didn't work on the other board, um, seems to be nice and stable on this machine. And it contains a GUI and a graphical user interface, which uses the Quest mouse, which is beside you, which now works. And um, it's not, the most complex of GUIs but it was a start and it was quite an early one so we'll have a look at that but first we're going to look at the quintessential monitor for the BBC Micro and this is the Microvitec RGB Cub Monitor so let's just power the machine on and we get a nice bright image and this image is high res you'll have to uh, excuse the slight flickering because it's obviously picking up a scan rate with the camera picks up but you hopefully you'll be able to see how bright and how sharp this actual monitor really is and it was one of the monitors that was used for the BBC computer program and one of the big reasons for that is because it is a stable monitor and it can produce a display of very high resolution graphics which this is in at the moment. Now what we'll do with this is um, we'll keep it on the slightly flickery monitor for a few minutes just to show you how this system works. Okay so if I use the mouse and I go up to word processor 
Okay, and you get the word processor, which is arguably a lot better than um, WordWise was. And as you can see now, the um, the image is stabilized because it's not so bright and the camera can cope with it. And that's what you find on the computer program. It used dark scan lines or dark graphics lines to um, combat the scan line effect of these monitors. But and that's why they use them. So if we do um, And you see the BBC is able to produce quite clear 80 column and above graphics or text mode. So if we go down it and we just go columns 80 characters on the screen and um, as you can see it is very very clear and that's one of the biggest reasons why they used these monitors but the odd thing about this is it's all graphically driven so if I wanted to save this there you go down at the bottom you have your list of file files on this disk and then you could save it whatever you want but yeah, I'll just think this disk is full but you'll get the idea yep catalog full doesn't matter um, and then you've got basically load save so you've got save load exit browse your disk insert characters overwrite characters um, you have markers to cut and paste and copy and delete and move sections of your text and then you've got print so if I go up to print my next real job is to get um, a nice printer running on this but you'll see it says the printer is unattached which it is so it's quite intuitive for what it is press escape go back and if I press break on this we go back to the slightly flickering, very bright screen, but but if I go to graphics, okay, this is literally a paint package and then arrays. And you know, basically it's just your general package that you would use on say an Apple Macintosh. But you can see it's in very high res and it's monochrome in the same an Apple Macintosh was. Okay, so it's got all the, the features of roughly what the early Apple Macintosh was and it does exactly the same. And this is on a, a BBC Micro and it's a, around about 1982 to 83. So it's quite an early system that does this. If we go back again, the other one is you got a font editor down here. But if you want to exit this, you press escape and you type in basic. You press break and you go back to Acorn Basic. And what it does is it puts a disk filing system on but turns the super ROM off because it's not used in this it's um, all ROM based the software for this so and then you just got basic is normal you know everything else works it doesn't doesn't interfere and as you can see the non-white colors these images are really stable And this is off of a five and a quarter inch floppy disk system. Okay, so um, you know you've got character editor.
And this is a floppy version, but in color of a lot low res than what you had with the Watford graphical user interface on the front end of this, where you can edit your characters on here. Now, but if I go back, if I just completely reset this machine, and we go to font editor here, this is the high res version. It's quite bright, it's quite flickery, but you edit your characters in this box and create your own fonts like the way you would have probably wanted to do back in the day. And it's just the way that this is a nice neat package for somebody who does a lot of text editing or a lot of editing, a lot of writing. If you combine this with WordWise and WordWise Plus and all the other ROMs that were in this machine, it was definitely, definitely used for development along with the ROM editor that was in it as well. So it's a nice stable machine. I have a list of ROMs still to go in it, which is why I really want that ROM board repaired. So it should boot up and then we can put these ROMs back into this machine. And it's a good machine. It's just really bright. Works really well. The, the mouse isn't it needs a, quite a bit of pressure to make it move. It's a bit squeaky as well. Um, but, you know, it works and it does the job. And it would have been a godsend back in the 1980s. The other thing is if you clip and escape and you can, you can do all of your all of your normal stuff you could do on screen from here as well. So everything you can do on the normal basic screen you can do from here in that little window. And what happens is when you do your eventually load your pages in, the pages appear here as well. But the, the, the word processor isn't bad at all. And it's not massively far away from what we use now. So productivity wise hasn't changed an awful lot. So now we've got a, a BBC Model B that's functioning, working and stable. Needs a little bit more cleaning up. That case needs to be sorted out. But there's nothing majorly wrong with the machine at all. The, um, the ROM board will be sorted out as soon as I can find a couple of components that I need for it to replace. And it's also got a working disk system on it as well, which, although noisy, they always were, it does work. And this was a machine that was saved from the scrap heap, basically. It was going to be chucked, thrown, or end up in a recycle bin or a recycle yard. So I think if we can get hold of more of these machines, you know, if you're out and about having a look around and you're capable of doing some fault finding and maybe some soldering and parts replacing, then it's nice to keep these machines running. So I hope you enjoyed that little look. Probably one of the earliest graphical user front ends for a microcomputer. And uh, it's certainly not too far away in years from the Apple Macintosh. So it was a good effort. But I um, kind of think that they could have put a little bit more into it to make it a bit more intuitive for people. But at the same time, again, it's an early adopter of a mouse when people really didn't know what to do with them. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you keep up with this channel and hope you subscribe so we have some more coming out very shortly. Thanks a lot.